Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf down in Orlando today. We are at the PGA show on kind of a, it's almost a windy day out here, uh, but it's nonetheless, it's a great day. And uh, part of what makes it a great day is that we have new Titleist Vokey SM10 wedges to discuss today for this edition of the Swing Report. So um, Corey Girard is here with me. Corey is um, everything wedges with Titleist, except that you're not Bob Vokey, but that's pretty darn close, right? <laughs> not uh, even close. <laughs> so so, uh, so Corey, um, you actually just spent some time with our fitters here, kind of educating them a little bit. So this is a pretty fresh discussion for, for me already, but um, kind of what are the key um, advancements with SM10 compared to previous series that uh, the viewers should know about? Right, a few different things we need to know, Drew. So number one, the profiles, Bob and the team have worked really, really hard on making sure that the profiles with SM10 are just spot on. And this comes back to tour player feedback, mm -hmm. better player feedback. We kind of take everything into one and then go, how are we gonna make this product better? Two cool things with the profiles. Bob has worked really hard to make sure that the toe profiles are really symmetrical. And you might think, well, why is that important? It's important to the player because it gives you confidence when you open up that club face in different positions, particularly around the green. And then the second thing, which is really, really neat, particularly for fitters or people being fit, is every profile within a loft is exactly the same. So an example is if you grab all of our 60 degree options, of which there are five different grinds, you're now not going to look down at one and say, I like this one better or this one better. They like, all look like the, the same. same. So you're now going to base that on performance, whether right. that's indoors or outdoors, you're going to find the right one that gives you the right contact, which really leads us to the first big thing when it comes to wedges, shot versatility. Mm. We're talking grinds. We don't need to be experts on grinds. We just need to go and see a trained professional <laughs> like yourself and get fit for the right one. And the importance of that is it's going to give you the right contact. If you find the right grind, Drew, contact will be between grooves two and five, so nice and low on the club face. What you don't want to do is see that ball hitting high on the face, riding up the club face, launching high with no spin. It's not what we mm -hmm. want. Nice and low gives you that nice low driving ball flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That center of gravity too really helps with that. So a couple of things with SM10, Drew, when it comes to center of gravity, which is a technical term, but it's really neat, particularly in the higher lofts, where we take that CG up and push it forward. As we take CG higher, the ball's gonna come out nice and low. And as we send it forward, that club face is now gonna to wanna to square up at impact. That's really important on those higher lofts. Yep. On the lower lofts though, it's actually different. So on the lower lofts, that CG is a little on the heel side. We've moved that closer to center, so closer to the toe, because players don't wanna see that ball turning to the left for a right-hander. They want to see a nice square club face on those full swings, and that's what that does there to help you. Totally, totally. And I remember uh, during the discussion with some of the fitters, you also mentioned uh, some maybe tight, little tweaks to the matrix of grinds right. out there. So yeah. um, I know we talked a lot about the T grind as well. So maybe explain what that one is, and also maybe some of the other options that, I know there's 25 potential options, which is there are. a ton. You guys are the yeah. leader already in the options available for bounce and grind. And now to make even more advancements to that's pretty cool. Yeah. And 25 sounds daunting. You don't have to be an expert on that. <laughs> Just we have 25 to make sure that we get the right one for you, whether that's your playing style, the shots you want to hit or the conditions you're in. So two big changes to that matrix. As iron lofts get a little stronger, we wanted to have a different option for that 54 and 58 degree wedge. We know now that a lot of people are using those to complement mm -hmm. their iron set. So in the 54, we've brought back everyone's favorite, the 5408M, that low bounce option. Yeah, Love happy about grind. that. Yep. <laughs> in that 54, and then we complement that with the T grind in that 58 as well. So nice low sure. four degrees of bounce on that yeah, one. Yeah, totally. There's, uh, there's always been a a wide array of options with, with Titleist. And um, one thing that I heard you mention too was the grooves and the construction, yeah. like how the ball is supposed to interact. So you mentioned that each groove is constructed in a certain manner that provides that interaction with the golf ball every single right. time, repeatability, right? We spend a lot of time on wedge design. We probably spend the most of our time right here on grooves and maximizing spin, not just the most spin, but managing spin over the life of that wedge. So a couple of key things here. Our process is refined to make sure that the edge of that groove is cut to perfection. Wedge after wedge, Bob Vokey, Drew makes us check every single oh. wedge that we make around the world. It takes a lot of time yeah. and money to do that. I suppose that's how they become so good, right? I mean, <laughs> It means that we know that we're giving you a part that is perfect. Mm -hmm. And also too, we have our own minimum standards we want to uphold in terms of, hey, how, how often do we 
do we cut this until we throw the cutter in the bin? So spin is something we want to maximize. We also cut the grooves differently based on loft. The whole job of a groove is to make sure that we channel debris such as grass, dirt, sand, water into that spin mill groove so the ball can hit the machined edge of it and grip. That's really important. That's what a groove is meant to do. On our lower lofts, that's more straight on the way we cut that. But on the higher lofts, we actually cut them on a different angle because that club is coming into sure. the turf, sand, rough, at a very different angle as well. So again, just trying to maximize how much debris we can channel into that groove. Sure, sure. And uh, lastly, let's touch on the, the finishes. The yeah. finishes here. So is there actually four of them total? We've there's got, this there's is the new nickel one here, which is fantastic. Four. There goes one. So we've got <laughs> the Tua Chrome, which is our most popular. We've also got the Jet Black, which is becoming more and more popular, Drew, from generation to generation. But what we've really wanted was a genuine in-betweener, and that's what you have in your mm -hmm. hand. Yeah. The all-new nickel finish. Yeah, which it looks fantastic. Right yeah, it's right between them. And I think you had talked about the glare possibility with the Tour Chrome. Jet Black may be too dark for some players. And uh, this is the, the perfect Just tweener. Just right. Just yeah. right. Well, <laughs> um, Corey, thank you so much for the, the discussion and all the information on SM10. Um, I, it, it's 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 Bob Wilkie wedges. They're going to be fantastic, but um, I can see why they're these ones are in particular are going to be special. So uh, now we'll get to the testing portion, right? So uh, Corey, thank you again for your your help here today. Thanks, Drew. Have fun in testing. All right, I'm joined now by Jake Montgomery here on the practice area at Les Bolstad Golf Course. Jake, of course, you're a master club fitter at the Minneapolis store, um, and you also play the SM10 wedges. So I do. This is uh, very kind of relevant for both of us. Actually, mm -hmm. I, I also play SM10, so this is going to be great. But um, we learned about these initially at the PGA show. It's now a few months later. We got some nice weather here in Minnesota, um, and you, so you've been playing some golf. What have you thought so far about the SM10s that you've got in the bag? I have absolutely loved them so far. Biggest thing I've noticed is that little lower flight they talked about with moving yeah. that center of gravity. I struggle a bit with flighting my wedges. I keep the face a little open. I'm seeing a lot lower trajectory. Give me better spin control, better flight control. Yeah. Overall, I've absolutely loved the wedges. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's great. And as we talked about too, there's just so many of the grind options too. And we'll mm -hmm. get into that a little bit more here with the various shots we're gonna hit today. But um, just to start, you know, we're, we're gonna hit a few different shots. Right mm -hmm. here, we've got about a 50 yard pitch shot. Um, to that left flag out there. And so I guess as we start, Jake, we had have you hit some shots, but if you're on the golf course, mm -hmm. you may be playing, let's say, a shorter par four. Yeah. Driven the ball into the fairway, mm -hmm. and you've got, you know, this little half pitch shot. How are you playing this one? Yeah, so first thing I'm doing, I'm kind of checking my lie here, making sure, all right, that's all nice and fluffed up. But I'm going for this pin here, probably going to aim it just off that right side there. Set up my stance a little bit open, open that face up a bit, really just swing down into it. Ooh, look at that. And try and hit it like that. <laughs> oh, that went right by the hole. Okay, yeah, because I noticed you you mentioned flighting the wedge, and that mm -hmm. one did have kind of a nice, you know, you'd it almost piercing low, and it kind of hopped and checked on you. Yeah, too. absolutely. If you can keep that a little bit lower, you're going to yeah. control that spin a lot better. But it gets high up in the air, it's kind of harder to judge where you're going to land that on the green. Yeah. So if you can flight that a bit lower, it's definitely going to help you score a little better. There it is. Pretty good. That there. one kind of chucked forward off the fringe there. Mm -hmm. Just a little front kick. That one I caught pretty that good. That was really good. Yeah, look at I'll that. I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, you got a couple good birdie chances up there. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. ultimately the goal here on this shot, right? Is just For to sure. Get it, just get it close. Give yourself a good look at, at a birdie or, you know, I guess if you happen to be here and, you know, this is your, I guess, birdie shot. Mm -hmm. um, trying to save a par then. For sure, 100%. Let's try a couple more here. What have you thought about the feel of these so far? So, I mean, they feel like a pretty traditional Vokey. I'd say yeah. maybe a little soft in the SM9. I've played pretty much every generation of these wedges since the yeah. SM6. Okay. Um, big fan of the SM9s, bigger fan of the SM10s. Okay. Wedge game right now is probably the best part of my game, and I absolutely love these. Really? Interesting, yeah. Let's, let's, let's see if we can get this one as the, the closest one so far, and then we'll maybe move into the bunker. Nice, a little higher a little that little time. A little higher. Well, it can do both, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. I like those those shots there. So what now what grind are you playing with this club? This is yes, your highest so one? This is my 54 degree. 54, so okay. I'm playing a 10S here. As I said, I like to open it up just a little bit. So I like having some of that heel relief there, but I use this a lot for full shots. So I don't want to have too much of that grind yeah. taken away. This grind has been perfect for me. I've used it, like I said, since the SM6. Um, 
You can manipulate this a lot, but it's great for full shots. I get a little lower bounce, a little more heel relief in my 58 degree. I'd like yep. to open that up quite a bit. But on my 54, I'm pretty much all the PBS grind. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, let's uh, let's move into the, the greenside bunker here and try some of those ones, and I think we'll maybe try a different grind too. Perfect. Absolutely. All right, Jake, bunker time now. Mm -hmm. So I've got the K grind here. Mm -hmm. This is the Absolutely. very, very wide sole, mm -hmm. 14 degrees of bounce. So yep. this is, they call it the bunker grind. Um, Absolutely. Basically, so it's designed to be in the bunker, but it's not like you can't really, it's not like you can't use another grind. Oh, 100%. Either. I mean, my father is a very much a digger. He yeah. takes a ton of turf. He plays a 14K in his 58 and absolutely loves it. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah, and that's that, That's the other thing, too. You, you can use the K grind elsewhere from other mm -hmm. areas, not just the bunker. You can also use, you know, any of the grinds necessarily. 100%. They all work in here. But this one's really just designed to move sand away from the ball absolutely. when you go through. Very high bounds. You can really slap that sand. Yep. So we'll try here. This is probably, what, like a 15 to 20 yard bunker shot mm -hmm. here? Relatively easy shot. How are you playing this? So what I like to do in the sand is I like to kind of pick out a grain of sand or, you know, a spot behind the ball, probably an inch or so for yep. this for this shot. And I'm just going to thud that spot with this mm -hmm. with this grind, just thud, let the ball kind of pop out with the momentum of and the energy created with that thud. So, Absolutely. And then just let it trickle towards the hole. I know some players like to really generate some spin and I'm more just like thump it out, let it trickle. I'm more in that train of thought as well. Ooh, we got a little right bit too it. firm with that one. Yeah, I'm gonna take down a little bit of the swing speed here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice shot. Thump it's it out, let it trickle. But yeah, it's so it's like I'm I'm even noticing too, like how much the sand is just removed from the area. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> like I look down and there's just nothing there anymore. Yeah. Which this is really grind, nice. You can really just slap the sand, ball disappears right at the green. Another great shot. Yep. And at this point, you know, I think most players, if they're in, find themselves in a bunker, you know, and you're trying to say what, like, a f I mean, 50% would be awesome getting up and down from oh, the bunker, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I don't know what the tour average is, but I think it's got to be close to, you know, not far ahead, above 50%. No. So, all right, let's try one more here if I can get closer than the rest of them. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah, I mean it's just it's so smooth. And again, we can, you know, it's this is a grind that you mentioned too. Like if I find myself in some like thick rough. Oh yeah. Or you know, finding myself where there's a lot of stuff around the golf ball, mm -hmm. that's where the the K grind can just move stuff out of the way. For sure. Especially that kind of softer turf and yeah. And, especially and, yeah, if you play at a course in very soft conditions. That yeah. K grind can be a great option for people. Yeah. I think uh What's going to be fun now is we're going to maybe try something to give you a little bit of a tougher shot. Mm -hmm. We got bunkers out here. We can maybe flop it over. Oh, absolutely. I like that. We're going to see what we can do here. Perfect. All right, Jake. Now we're outside behind the bunker. Mm -hmm. We've got some kind of high lofted flopping shot to do absolutely. here. So probably, what, 25 yards or so? Yeah, it's pretty close to that. Um, now on this shot, you've mm -hmm. got a different wedge here. So talk about the wedge you're going to use and kind of how you're going to try to hit this one. Yeah, so this is my 58 degree 8M. M grind, a lot of heel and toe relief. That allows me to set it very open with that leading edge being lower to the ground. Also lower bounce. That lower bounce helps me get underneath the ball a little easier. This is my flop machine. I use this quite often. I'm not scared to hit flop shots with it. Hopefully I can hit a couple good ones here. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I also am the same way where, you know, basically if there's any way that you know lofting the ball a little bit can help mm -hmm. around the green i always try to do that and i for have sure. a 60 degree but also the same grind yeah M grind. absolutely so for this shot i'm going to set up pretty open play my hands a little lower yep let that club really lay flat on the ground and my feel is almost that i'm cutting across it that way oh yeah you could even still hear a little bit too of the like the bounce still interacting oh with yeah the ground absolutely too. like it's not like there's not enough bounce you can still hear that kind of thud action Oh, there we go. Yeah, that'll do. We'll have to get the, uh, like a tee or something to fix some ball marks out there. <laughs> yeah, these are just landing nice and soft and depending mm -hmm. on the, the green and the conditions, right? I mean, that ball can kind of trickle down a hill per se, for sure. or, you know, there's the, just getting the ball to land softly is the key part here. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, like that one landed really softly for mm -hmm. you. A little bit past the hole, but it's still right there. Yeah, this is a shot I definitely use if I'm hitting onto a downslope, trying to get that yep. to land as right. soft as we can. Oh yeah, there's another good one. Ooh, you're getting close to dunking these. Yeah. I'm gonna let you keep hitting until you dunk one, because I think you're, you're zeroing in on that hole. Oh, that's really good. Can you do one better than that? That's pretty darn good. Let's see. Oh yeah, that looks so good actually. <laughs> oh, oh, curling, ooh. That's a good finish, that's yeah. a good finish. Okay, that's so that's how you hit the flop shot mm -hmm. with your Vokey SM10, the M grind, right? Mm -hmm. Sweet, that's, so that's what you actually would set up with on the golf. 100%, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, we've hit a few shots here. Um, we kind of know a little bit about the playability of these wedges. You can mm -hmm. hit any type of wedge shot. Let's kind of wrap things up here in our final thoughts segment, um, and we'll kind of help golfers with more of those grinds specifically here. For sure. All right, so Jake, testing complete here, Velky SM10 wedges. Um, long time coming here, we were able to get outside finally and, and uh, perform some testing here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the key thing here, we can kind of get into it, was that you mentioned the sort of ability to keep that ball flight down. You're not sure. losing it in the wind or generating too much spin, mm -hmm. um, but then also the versatility of the various different shots as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then as we get into the grinds too, let's go mm -hmm. kind of, I'll talk through a few of the grinds to kind of give your feedback on really the type of player that they're for. Yep. So um, starting with the D grind. So mm -hmm. this is the, the D grind is the player's high bounce wedge. So it's kind of like the M grind, but just a little higher bounce versatility. Mm -hmm. You got the relief kind of across on the, the heel and the toe and the back edge there. Um, so really for the player that likes to open the wedge, but still might be a little steeper, you think? Yeah, hundred percent. If you're someone that takes a divot from 30 yards out, yep. D grind is for you. Yeah. If you attack it very steep, that bounce is going to protect you from that kind of chunk miss that you mm -hmm. typically see a lot. Still a lot of versatility. You can open that face up, still get it a little lower yep. to the ground, but that D grind is really going to work well for that player that takes a larger divot. Right, right. And there's a lot of players out there that do take the big divot. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely one for them. Now, the F grind is kind of a different direction. Um, you're going to see the F grind a lot on like your 46, 48, 50, 52 degree lofts because yep. the F grind is pretty much that all-purpose grind for mm -hmm. mostly full swings or maybe like the square face kind of chip shots around the yep. green. So, Absolutely. I mean, if you're not, I guess I would say if you're not a player that likes to open or close, mm -hmm. that's probably where you'd lean, right? Yeah, for sure. If you're playing that wedge just kind of straightforward like this, maybe a little forward press there, but not opening it up at all, F grind is totally fine. Most players play that in their 48 or 52 degree. Um, but yeah, very solid grind for those more yep. full shots or just straight pitch shots. Now the K grind, we talked about this one already, uh, mm -hmm. so don't need to go in too much detail, but basically, big wide sole yep. um, for you know a little bit more forgiveness there but also for bunker shots and kind of moving extra debris or grass um, anything out of the way of the golf ball mm -hmm. making sure you get clean contact there um, next two i wanted to touch on the two that you have in the bag yes m and s yep so the m grind we talked about that one with the flop shot mm -hmm. um, describe a little bit more about the m grind and who might benefit from that. yes i mean it's just a very versatile wedge if you're a bit more of a sweeper you can mm -hmm. get into that lower bounce m grind there um, a lot of heel and toe relief, a lot of material yep. taken off there. Rests very flat to the ground. I mean, you can use this on a full shot. Honestly. Oh, yeah. I, I take it out of the fairway all the time. Um, but it's more geared towards that more open shot mm -hmm. around the greens, adding more spin, getting the ball more vertical in the air. Yep. And then that S grind, you also said you had a 54 degree mm -hmm. S grind. Yep. So that's kind of a, um, it's got some trailing edge grind, mm -hmm. um, sort of built for kind of maybe slightly towards those square face shots, but you can still open yeah. a little bit too. Absolutely. Right? It's, it's really just an F grind with some kind of trail edge relief. Yeah. You can open it up when needed, but it performs very well on a full shot or a pitch shot. Then lastly, this is kind of the one that a lot of players might not use. Mm -hmm. That's that T grind. Yeah. So um, very low bounce, very thin lies is mm -hmm. where this one really thrives. But yeah. I imagine you don't really fit a ton of these ones. Not a ton in Minnesota. With us having a softer yeah. soil, the T grind is going to dig a little more than we'd like. Down in our mm -hmm. Texas, Arizona stores, yeah. you're going to see a lot more of those T grinds in play because when they're playing in early spring, summer, that ground is real hard panned. That lower bounce yeah. is gonna help them get under the ball, under those tight lies. Yeah, and then the last thing we should mention here too is that I know you would probably you know, echo this, but mm -hmm. golfers should have multiple grinds in the 100%. bag, right? Like you don't wanna have you know, the S grind all the way through mm -hmm. or you, know, you wanna mix up that because you can hit various different shots and have as much versatility as possible, right? That's what you're looking for? Yes, absolutely. You wanna have a club for every shot out there. Exactly, well, Jake, thank you for- Yeah, no problem. 
hanging out with us here, hitting some shots, mm -hmm. testing. Uh, golfers, go get fit for Vokey SM10 wedges with someone like Jake here or any of our master fitters at our stores. We'll dial it in your short game with the Vokey mm -hmm. SM10 wedges and make sure you dial in your grinds and your lofts as well. It's the most important part of getting a wedge set. So, mm -hmm. Jake, thanks again. Uh, awesome stuff here. And I know it's going to be a big year for the SM10 wedges. Absolutely.